All right, guys, um, this is a heads up before the introductions occur. Um, I just want to let you guys know that I am going to just be going over uh, the basics, the prerequisites, um, you know, the foundations of uh, what you need to uh, set up your custom battle system in uh, this video. So this is going to be RPG Maker Tutorial 11 um, Part 1A. Um, if you want to skip, um, you know, all these prerequisites um, and, you know, sort of uh, advice that I have throughout this video tutorial, you can go uh, straight to RPG Maker Tutorial 11 Part 1B. And that is where I'm going to jump uh, right into making the uh, beginnings of our custom battle system. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'll leave it up to you and uh, let's go on to the introduction stuff. So. Hello everybody, I am Ken once again. Thank you for joining me on a, another video tutorial for RPG Maker 2003. Uh, this week's video tutorial will be covered in three parts. I did get a request from a YouTube user named Echoing Clock. Um, and for his request, he wanted to know how to create a side view uh, battle system similar to the Final Fantasy games. And uh, instead of doing the random encounters, how to create a Earthbound style, um, you know, touch the NPC to start a battle type of. Uh, uh, battle system. Um, <clears throat> so I went ahead and created a entire uh, custom battle system in the RPG Maker 2003. Um, I know this is not PX Ace like you wanted. Uh, however, uh, you know principles should apply uh, to that engine as well. So hopefully you can transfer what you uh, you know acquired here in terms of your knowledge and. Uh, kind of help that to make your own side view battle system. Um, so let's get started. Part one, I will basically be going over the graphics um, and how to set, kind of set those up into your engine. Um, and then parts two and three will go over like the actual menu system um, and also the, um, the uh, variables and switches that you'll need to implement into your battle system to make it all function. Um, before you do anything, uh, let me just show you guys what I have made, so you get a sense of what the, bat what the complete battle system would look like. So I'm going to increase the volume here a bit and go into the game. So you'll remember this map from uh, when we were making our custom menu system, our uh, radio menu system. And this time I have a character that's a uh, different sprite and also a another NPC event on the map um, so this is what it would look like when we press the action key okay so let's start off with a uh, magic <laughs> And attack. And I do want to apologize for the lag that you are noticing um, in the video. Um, because I am recording the screen, it is uh, lowering the frames per second. Okay, so that is um, a sneak peek at our battle system that we made in this engine. Um, the first thing that I want to you know, tell you guys before we start is creating a custom battle system is very time consuming and it's you know, not something that you can make within you know, a day or even two days. It's something that, you know, requires a great deal of thought. Um, 
and it's probably going to take you several weeks to make a um, you know very complex in depth battle system for um, for a game that you know spans over say an hour or two if you're, if you're trying to make a you know full fledged RPG game it's going to take you a while if you're trying to do something you know to test your uh, you know abilities maybe you're trying to learn um, how to create one um, and you're kind of watching my video and doing um, you know your own thing in the engine um, it's probably not going to take you too long maybe a couple of hours but um, anyways I just want you guys to you know understand and be aware that uh, it, it is going to take some some time uh, so before jumping into it, you know, you need to think about what you want to do. Um, you need to think about the layout. You need to think about what graphics you're going to use. If you're going to make your own graphics, if you're uh, going to import graphics, um, if you're going to edit graphics. Um, <clears throat> you know how many characters you have, how many levels uh, those characters will be able to obtain in your game. Uh, what skills, um, you know, all that stuff. What items you're going to have in your game, all, all of those things you need to think about. Um, if you want to do it, if you want to do it right, um, if you want to half-ass it and you know produce something that people are probably not going to enjoy, then you know you can kind of play it by ear and you know shoot, for, you know hope for the best. But um, so, anyways, that's enough of my lecturing. Um, the first thing we're gonna do, the first thing I did before uh, even going into this engine, is I went to. Um, so there's this really good site called spridersresource.com uh, <clears throat> and it's just filled with a ton of uh, sprite sheets that you can download for free. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the people who put up these sprite sheets don't require any credit, sometimes you know, they are appreciative if you do credit them, you know, whatever, whatever the case is, you know, please. Um, kind of go with their wishes. Um, anyways, so what I did was I went to the site and uh, I'm gonna copy this image just to show you guys. Um, this is actually my uh, folder, my uh, RPG Maker tutorial uh, folder for the custom battle system and you can see all of the graphics that I have. So initially I chose um, to kind of crop out this particular sprite, however I didn't really like the look of it. Uh, so you can see all the animations I have going on. Uh, those are some screenshots. So these are the sprites I chose initially, and I honestly didn't like the look of it. So what I did was I uh, went back to the spidersresource.com website, and I decided to go with uh, this guy right here. So you can see all the animations. Uh, these are all frames, single frames, and you can see when I scroll through them. Um, <clears throat> the multiple frames per uh, animation sequence allows it to, you know, look a lot smoother and allows for movement. Um, but anyways, what I want to show you guys is how to get to that, uh, how to create these graphics. So go into the site. I'm just going to use this uh, image as an example. I'm going to copy this image. I'm going to go into Photoshop. Hit Control and U for PC users, and that would be Command and uh, N, not U and Command and N for uh, Mac users. And this window is going to appear. Hit OK. Then you want to hit uh, Control or Command and V to paste through that image. Okay, so I just saved that image into my RPG Maker Tutorial 11 folder. Now I need to try to find it, wherever it is. There we go. <clears throat> so, you know, if, uh, if paste works for you in Photoshop, then great. It usually works for me, but sometimes, for some reason, it just stops working. Um, you know, if it works for you, great. If not, then you can do what I did. Just save that image into a folder and open it up in Photoshop. Now what you want to do is, obviously you can use this entire image to create your frames for, you know, the character animation. So what you want to do is kind of, um, just like this marquee tool, um, over here, the rectangular marquee tool, and then you want to kind of, um, crop, 
um, you know, a, a single uh, sprite in the sprite sheet. I'm gonna hit Control and C for copy, and then I'm gonna hit Control and N for view. And remember, it's Command if you're a Mac user. So, <laughs> wanna hit Control and V. You can see that we have a single frame, a single sprite. Um, what you would wanna do after this point is just hit Control and S, or Command and S, and you would wanna save that as a PNG um, image, but of course, because we're using RPG Maker 2003, you need to index the color. So to index the color, go to image here, mode, and then index color. It's gonna ask you if you wanna flatten the layers. Yep. So you can see over here, all our layers are merged into one background layer, and you can see the colors here. We're using 16 bits of color. Uh, okay. And if you look on your uh, layers uh, tab, you can see that this layer is in fact indexed. This image is in fact indexed. So that's one frame. To create another frame, you just drag this crop, uh, crop selection here, Control C or Command C, Control V or Command V. So there you go. If I hit Control Z, you can see it shifts between the two images. And this is how you create your animation, basically. So then I would save this image as whatever. Make sure you save it as a PNG, as a .png uh, ping, whatever you want to call it. And you know you do that for the entire sprite sheet, and you eventually get. Uh, let me full screen this here. You eventually get all of the sprites, all of the frames for your character. Okay. So if I select all these images, you can see I have 28 selected, so I, that means I have 27 frames for this one character. If I go back and go to the mob wolf, I have 17 frames for this wolf character. So let me just show you guys the frames that I used. <laughs> okay. And not only do you want frames uh, for your characters, but you also want images used for your uh, your stage. So let me show you guys those images. So what I did was I created a 320 by 240 dimension picture in Photoshop, and then I took images and sort of edited them to fit within that uh, window. Um, and so this is one I created. Obviously, the white it would be transparent when we import it into RPG Maker 2003. And all that would show in this case is uh, the grass, the green grass here. So that's one image. That's another image. That's another image. That's another image. Um, this is another image that I didn't. I ended up not using. You know, I just this is another image I ended up not using, but I kind of you know set it up to see what works, what didn't work. Uh, this is an image for the ground that I ended up not using. It just looked uh, a little too weird. And uh, so this is the image for the ground that I ultimately ended up with. This is a 320 by 240. Uh, another trial image. I tried it out, didn't like it, you know, whatever. But this is the cloud. Um, this is not going to be imported as a picture, but rather as a panorama. Um, <clears throat> because this is a larger than 640 by 480 image what you want to do is uh, because you won't be able to import that using this method right here you know um, what you want to do is go to Photoshop open it up um, so if I check the dimensions here go to image and image size and then it's set to pixel so this is 1280 by 240 so we have the height uh, set properly but the width is too large for RPG Maker 2003's uh, resource manager. Um, if you don't know what that is, you probably should by now, you know, go watch some of my other video tutorials. This is the resource manager. Um, 1280 is too large for it to import, so what, what you're going to want to do is go to Control, Shift, and S, or Command, Shift, and S, whatever it is on Mac. And you are going to want to go into your RPG Maker 2003 uh, game folder directory and import, or save that, excuse me, save that, uh, save this image into the panorama folder. 
Um, that way, when you open up RPG Maker 2003, this image will actually show up into your uh, directory and it will be usable uh, when you set this as a panorama. So I have that image and uh, yeah, that, I think that's about it. Okay. So, um, let me go back to 2003 and I'm going to change this event line so it switches to, so it teleports to that map, this map right here. Um, and I have three different maps here. You can see each map includes more events. Um, this battle map right here, the first one, um, is what we'll go over on this tutorial. Um, for part two, which will be sometime next week, we'll go over this map. And for part three, which will, will be sometime in uh, two weeks from uh, you know this current video that you are watching, um, we'll go over this map. So for battle map or battle map A, um, I guess we can refer to this as battle map A, just to be consistent. Um, I basically have set up all the graphics here. So now if I go to play, this is all you see. So there are no menus, the animation just loops. Um, you know, you can't attack, you can't do anything. All I can do right now is if I press enter or Z on my keyboard, I can uh, sift through the various animations. Um, and that's just how I set up this map. So you can see all our images, uh, the panorama uh, of the cloud, scrolling from the right hand to the left hand side in the background, and then all the, uh, the ground image, uh, the trees, the grass, the hills, those are all images. And then I have some um, particle uh, effects going on um, on the foreground, I'm going to lower the volume here on the foreground has some part of particle effects going on and some lighting effects as well as a scene um, like some borders like movie-esque borders so that is the effect um, okay all right so in part 1b we will be going over um, exactly what lines I coded into these events um, and I'll show you guys exactly how to get to uh, this point with uh, Battle Map A. So you can do it on your own and uh, please do follow along. So I'll see you guys then.